Good morning, Los Angeles, and welcome to the second day of the virtual fact-finding mission LA 2028 on sports and infrastructure. It's 8 o'clock in the morning here in California, and we're happy to have you here again. This week, we'll be connecting Dutch and American businesses and organizations to the Olympic and Paralympic Games of 2028 in Los Angeles. And as was mentioned yesterday, um, every time when LA is host city, this will be the third time, they change the nature of the Olympics forever. So this time, LA promises to, uh, to host the most, the most sustainable Olympic Games ever. Um, and they will be reusing many existing facilities and buildings. So today is all about the sports facilities of the future, smart stadiums. Um, and in the sessions today, you will learn, learn more about the latest developments here in the United States and in the Netherlands. If you want to share about this fact-finding mission, please do use the hashtag NLUSA, hashtag Digitale Missie, or uh, tag us, the Consulate General in San Francisco, at NL in SF. And if you have any questions uh, for us or for any of the speakers, please leave them in the, ch in the chat box below your viewer, and we'll get back to them later in this program. Um, good morning, Herbert. Good morning, Tietze. How are you? I'm good, thanks. Um, you are a huge sports fan, I know. I am. Um, Unfortunately, the Olympics in Tokyo this year uh, are postponed. Uh, but what is your favorite Olympic moment ever? Yeah. Well, great question, Tietze. Um, well, to me, uh, that's the men volleyball finals in Atlanta, 1996. I, I clearly remember. We had an Italian team as the clear favorites. We had a desire and uh, the fifth set, and then we won. And uh, since I'm a big fan, uh, I know Bas van der Hoor. He was the most valuable player. So for me, that's one of these sort of magic moments in sport. Um, my most magic moment is actually not a sports moment, but it's the opening ceremony. I'm always so impressed when you see all these delegations. Where I, I get goosebumps right now. When you, <laughs> when you see all the delegations walking in, um, all these, these fans watching, and it's like, you know, as if, uh, the whole world comes together, and I think that's really the power of the Olympics. The whole world comes together. It doesn't matter if you're enemies or not. And I right think so, yeah. sports really brings people together. So I think that's beautiful about the Olympics. Um, and in the city of Hollywood, you can, of course, expect a spectacular opening ceremony. Um, and for their 2024 bid, LA designed uh, uh, an, uh, an opening ceremony, an animation of their opening ceremony, um, to bring uh, the people together in not one, but in two stadiums. Let's look at this animation. LA 2024 introduces an opening ceremony concept that will honor the Olympic history of the 1932 and 1984 games at LA Memorial Coliseum while also harnessing the world's most technically advanced sports stadium at the future home of LA's NFL teams in a global celebration of sport. The LA 2024 plan will create a citywide celebration in two iconic Los Angeles venues. One, hosting the ceremony and representing our city's fascination with what's next. And the other, honoring LA's great historic Olympic past in an unprecedented citywide celebration for a new games for a new era. All right, it's going to be uh, amazing, I think. Yeah, for sure. So they mentioned uh, a stadium with all the uh, all the latest technology. Um, today we'll also talk about smart stadiums. To me, it's still a bit vague. So what is a smart stadium? Well, I think we'll learn later today, of course. But I would say it's basically using technology, data, uh, for uh, giving extra additional services and experiences in the stadium. So for the stadium organizer or for the visitors, well, you get some new kind of uh, features to have a better sort of uh, fan experience, for example. Or you could be helped in like finding the, the lines for the bathroom or uh, navigate through the crowds. I think especially now in GoFit, it's important to have these kind of uh, apps available for getting people at the right time at the right place, not to get sort of uh, these, these huge crowds we all would like to avoid. Um, and actually, I spoke to Sander van Stiphout earlier. Um, the Arena Stadium in Amsterdam is uh, working together with partners and the city of Amsterdam to uh, really test apps and other kind of features for bringing the best experience in COVID times because of all this sort of uh, extra rules and regulations we need to respect in that uh, uh, matter. So maybe we should take a look at this video. would like to elaborate a little bit on, uh, on, on our journey to 
prepare ourselves for, for the very near future. So this is our venue, uh, the 55,000 seater in Amsterdam. Um, we uh, are currently preparing ourselves for, for the next event. So luckily uh, we, we now have some events in the calendar. We uh, called a challenge called Reimagine Football, um, which is uh, about, of course it's about football, but it's a little bit broader than that. Uh, the, the specific challenges that we have asked the world to help us with are, you know, how to engage fans at home. Um, it's about how, how do we make sure that uh, amateur players and youth players keep on playing, although it's, uh, we're, we're encountering this crisis. And, and for us, the most important ones is operational excellence and fan experience. And operational excellence relates to how do we reopen the doors of our venues? Uh, how do we can push the allowed capacity to the maximum? Um, what kind of measure should we take? And um, interestingly enough, this is not a question, you know, only for the stadium. It's, it's a question about reinventing the entire customer journey. It, it's also about public transport. It's about um, trying to make sure that only healthy people arrive at the gate of the stadium. So, you can imagine that that requires cooperation that go far beyond the current cooperations that we have with the police and, and with the authorities. So new stakeholders are there, um, new type of solution. Uh, we need to gather new knowledge on, on all kinds of, of, of medical angles uh, towards uh, our business. And, and that's what we're trying to organize. So this challenge is there to, to really uh, get uh, to source the right solutions, um, test them, pilot them, and ultimately uh, include them in our operations. Well, that's very interesting because Sandra is telling us about new knowledge, new opportunities, uh, and like really bringing a stadium to life in a different perspective. So I would like now to turn to Sascha van der Most van Spijk. He is an entrepreneur living in Los Angeles and bridging sports and business. Sascha, good morning. Good morning, uh, Herbert. How are you? I'm good. Thank you, Sasha. I was wondering, your company is, is very active in this sort of world of bridging sports and, and business. Could you tell us a bit more about your company and perhaps uh, explain the word HUB to us? Yeah. Um, yeah, so HUB stands for Humans Unlocking Potential. It's also uh, very much used in the Dutch stadiums uh, to cheer on the team. Um, but uh, yes, we, we have been here in, uh, in LA, uh, started in 2016, helping out uh, companies from abroad, a lot from the Netherlands. Um, and a lot of our companies that we work with are from the, in the sports industry. So uh, sports tech, uh, but, yeah, but even stretching as far as uh, sports travel, uh, both hosting over here uh, companies that uh, so sports business travel. Uh, but on the other hand, also going um, to uh, uh, international uh, tournaments, traveling. Um, so, yeah, at this moment, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty quiet on that end. Yeah, I can imagine yeah. because of COVID, of course. of course. But I mean, of course, since you've been around for quite a while in Los Angeles, I mean, you, you could argue business is business, but sports is not always business. How would you sort of compare both worlds and what is it like to do business in the world of sports? Could you tell us a bit about that? Um, yeah, so the, the world of sports is is very very broad. Um, so we, uh, as we see in this sports, uh, uh, this virtual mission, we're talking uh, about um, infrastructure, uh, mobility with this, within uh, within this, within the city, transportation. Um, we're talking about wearable devices. We're talking about. Uh, tracking systems, so it's a very, very broad uh, spectrum. So we, we um, with Hub and with with the people we talk to, uh, we try to uh, look at diff all these different aspects of uh, of sports. And um, uh, so, yeah, for in 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 the, if we look at this uh, this mission we're we're talking about right now, it's uh, mainly infrastructure. I would say we uh, we focus on, but it's yeah, sports. Is, uh, is, is a very broad, broad uh, spectrum. Yeah, we heard yeah, Sander van Stiphout, of course, talking about, course, talking about the smart stadium, the, smart the stadium, Jan Cruijff Arena, Arena, and being Arena, their yeah. test ground, uh, test bed for all kind of COVID-related uh, measures. Uh, you've worked with the LA Galaxy here in Los Angeles. 
Um, I mean, did you notice any kind of smart stadium uh, features in the stadium of the, the Galaxy? Um, at the stadium itself, they they have been uh, uh, working a lot on the uh, on the, the fan experience, I would say. Um, and it's they're they're more projecting going towards towards the future. Um, at this moment, I'm sure that uh, they are looking just like like the arena is doing at how they can can start to operate again after the uh, the, the COVID uh, period is over. So how can or, or even while COVID is going on, how can they improve and uh, uh, of getting people back into the stadium? So um, that is that I'm sure there's that's, that is going on right now. Um, as far as smart smart uh, solutions at the stadiums, uh, they have had uh, features like uh, streaming services um, at at the fields to analyze games, for example. So those right. are kind kind of examples that that they use over there. Yeah. Um, yeah. Tracking systems with uh, with the players. Um, Technology like that is, uh, is is very common with yeah. uh, with uh, everything you would expect, of course, in the states in a way. And then, uh, final question to you, Sasha. I, I noticed, and you have this here. Uh, you have your home field advantage project. Maybe just a few words on that because I love the project. Oh, thanks, Garrett. Uh, thanks for asking. Yeah, we uh, we are a leadership program for uh, for high school students, um, and we provide coaching education to uh, to high school students, and they organize after school um, activities for uh, for elementary schools. So, and actually for that, um, for our organization, we also use Sports Tech, uh, also a Dutch company uh, called Pro Soccer Planner. And what they do is provide a curriculum uh, on uh, mobile devices. So all of our coaches have, an, have their curriculum in their pockets and uh, are well prepared to, uh, to start their sessions. So even at very grassroots level, we, uh, we try to integrate uh, sports technology. Well, wonderful. Uh, keep on doing good work, uh, Sasha. Looking forward to seeing you soon again. So um, I would say it's clear that there are so many business opportunities in Los Angeles. But then again, how to find the right matches and how to find the right connections. That's always a tricky thing. Of course, we have a Netherlands business support office in Los Angeles. We'll come to Daniela Berden a bit later. But we thought 10 million people, a car city, you have to know your way. We should help entrepreneurs navigate Los Angeles. And we created a playbook. And, um, well, let's play the video of the playbook. Hello. Or should I say, hello? See that book? That's me. I'm originally from Holland, but I've been living in the City of Angels for quite some time now. LA is more than just movies and famous people. You can find hundreds of exciting startups right here in Venice, also known as Silicon Beach alone. For Dutch businesses, there are many opportunities here, from logistics and digital media to food and even agriculture. <gasps> Whoa, that was a close one. The city is full of action, many opportunities to network, build partnerships, and expand your business! This town ain't big enough for the both of us. Book. Playbook. In short, Los Angeles has everything you need for your business to succeed. Hollywood ending included. I'm your guide to business in L.A. Read me to learn more about Dutch entrepreneurs who followed their dream and settled here in California. Well, I would say read this paper and this playbook and you will know all about Los Angeles. And if you would like to find it, you can find it at www.nlintheusa.com slash LA playbook. Um, indeed, to help you build partnerships and to find new business. But then again, we have as well an office, so real people helping you out. We launched the office in January 2020. And one of the colleagues in Los Angeles is Daniela Berden. Daniela's lived for about eight years, correct me if I'm wrong, Daniela, in Los Angeles. And you know the world of business quite well. Please tell me a bit. You have, of course, eight years in Los Angeles to prepare yourself for the games. Um, well, what is going on and what is your forecast? Where could we be more active or even be proactive as Dutch entrepreneurs? Thank you for having us, uh, Herbert. Uh, welcome and uh, good morning from Los Angeles. Well, you know, um, going back to uh, sports, you know, LA is, you know, the sports capital of the United States. There's five major leagues just only in LA. You have the M NBA, the NFL, the NHL, 
Um, the Olympics, uh, the LA 2028 20, Olympics will be the first summer games in the U.S. since 1996. So that's exciting. And so um, the LA bid was really praised by the IOC because they're using record-breaking numbers of existing and temporary facilities that they have. And that's amazing. There's a lot of opportunities here in sports, uh, but also, of course, in other different business sectors where we basically are here on the ground in Los Angeles helping entrepreneurs uh, with any type of um, information they need. We do partner scans, business scans. We provide coaching. There's support from the government. Uh, we can uh, get vouchers. Uh, so there's a lot of things we can do to help companies to really get an idea what they're dealing with, you know, what kind of business environment this is, you know, what they have to think about. So it's very practical on the ground. Um, I've been here for 15 years. I've worked in the business um, uh, industry here for uh, a long time. So I'm, I know what it takes. And so we can really help them uh, very practically on the ground. So wonderful. So it really is like hands-on, tailor-made, and I think easily you can sort of use the phone or email or have a chat with you, even in these COVID times, uh, just like today, we can easily reach out, entrepreneurs can reach out to you. Do you see any niches for the Dutch? I mean, what kind of sort of um, sectors would be of interest for the Dutch maybe to focus on from your perspective? Well, as you know, Herbert, uh, LA is very focused on sustainability and uh, e-mobility. Uh, the tech industry is huge. I come from the tech industry. That's uh, that's what my background is. VR, AR, uh, gaming. Um, LA is very creative. Uh, people find out very creative solutions very fast. Uh, it's, 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 it's an amazing environment. And at the same time, there's so much connections with the Netherlands, where they offer such great solutions, you know, innovative solutions for logistics and operations, infrastructure. Uh, there's just so many opportunities um, for so many Dutch companies. LA is so big, you know, uh, it's not, it's, it's, it has 58 counties, you know, Los Angeles County is just 10 million people by itself. So um, you can find an opportunity anywhere if you're looking for it. Of course. And with your help, you'll find one, I'm pretty sure. So last question, what would be your best advice for entrepreneurs if they would ask you today? Well, I think, you know, when people come to us, you know, we've helped 50 people, uh, 50 companies so far since we've been here. Uh, a lot of it is about, you know, getting to know your environment. You know, where are you going to do business? California, it is big. You know, how Los Angeles City is big. You know, um, do your research. Um, common questions we ask is, have you ever exported before? Are you willing to relocate? Uh, Los Angeles is all about networking. It is very important to build relationships, to take your time, uh, to, to create those fun fundamentals, to really uh, create a relationship where you can do business. So I would say do your research, be serious. Uh, it's important to have a little starter's capital, of course, when you want to do business in another country. And, um, you know, there is opportunity, but you have to work hard and you have to be persistent and you don't give up. So that would be a couple of things that I would say that's very important. Well, I think that's a great, uh, great advice. I just would like to really recommend all the entrepreneurs to reach out to you and to your colleague, Peter Post. And I wish you all the luck there in Los Angeles. Um, well, Sietse, uh, back to you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Gerbert. Um, yeah, this is uh, the end of uh, Good Morning Los Angeles. Let me briefly walk you through the program of uh, today, uh, what's ahead of you. Um, so we started with Good Morning Los Angeles, this talk show, and we'll continue after a short break with the virtual roundtable on smart stadiums. Uh, then you have a bit longer break, and after that you'll have a fireside chat on events and infrastructure. And then a matchmaking session where you will be connected to relevant uh, U.S. partners. Um, and those two last sessions are through Zoom. Um, thank you so much for joining again today. And we hope to see you uh, again tomorrow. Thank you.